This is a response to Dr. Paul Krugman's article in the New York Times on Monday, May 18th, 2015, Errors and Lies, uh, which is about W's adventure, W. Bush's, <laughs> George Bush's adventure into Iraq, and now that Jeb has stumbled all over himself a couple of times, Mark Rubio just made himself look like a fool, uh, that perhaps we can actually, we may be able to have a very frank discussion as to why we were lied into this war. And Dr. Krugman points out the word lie twice <laughs> in his article, and I will reaffirm that completely. Uh, but uh, w what Dr. Krugman points out is what is really sort of happening right now is that perhaps people who were involved in all of this are, are willing to say, because now everyone is willing to say that, oh, mistakes were made, and let's just move on, or as Santana would say, let's forget about it. So, dun, dun, dun. but, uh, so, you know, what really happened, what went on uh, back in 2001, 2002, 2003, to the lead up of the war? Uh, George Bush wanted a war. Now, um, you know, why did you want a, want a war? Well, they wanted a war for a lot of reasons. But what had led up to that after 9-11, uh, in terms of going after Saddam Hussein, there was a lot of word games that were going on as they were interspersing nuclear and chemical. Uh, and talking about, remember Mohammed Atta, the guy they saw in Czechoslovakia or in Prague or something like that. And they were they were they were belittling um, uh, uh, Hussein. Not that he didn't need to be belittled, but again, this was in another portion of the world. Uh, they had their way of dealing with things, and we were looking at possibly sending hundreds of thousands of troops over there to take him out. And what was the reason behind it? Now, what was the real reason behind it? And of course, we don't really have. There was a good reason. Who was that? Uh, the Bush administration wanted a war. Number two, they wanted to take him out. Number three, uh, Cheney had had an energy summit where he didn't want to let anyone in the public know about who attended that energy subject because they were all oil companies. And there was probably, some, and, and there was uh, uh, implied that there was some frank talk that if we could get rid of Hussein and we could get to that oil because it was under sanctions at that time. And all the, all the um, American oil companies had been thrown out in 1979. That, hey, this is a good way to, good way to go at it. So there were uh, a number of things that were going on right then in terms of the lead up of the war. Uh, and uh, remember uh, that why did we want to go to war? Well, after 9-11, you know, an excuse to go after him, that's number one. Number two, to go after his oil. Uh, number three, to wag the dog, uh, meaning that uh, to help the Bush administration. Far be it that anyone would ever conceive that the best way to keep up your poll numbers and to get reelected would be to start a war. But again, there's been a lot of stuff that has been written about how do you make a legacy for yourself? You know, you need to be a war president. You need to have something <laughs> that makes you stand out. You know, does anyone remember any of the presidents after Abraham Lincoln, before William McKinley? Well, I can rattle them off for you, but most people can't. <laughs> we really weren't, didn't, you know, we did manifest destiny, but we didn't engage in any war until the Spanish-American War. And uh, well, let's get back also to the politics of this whole thing. So the Bush administration was going headlong into war. They were stove piping information. They were, they were, they were uh, going after agencies, telling them to give them information, you know, badgering them, be, going after them. Um, who was it, the guy, George Tennant at the CIA was, you know, all behind this. So, you know, there was a big push for war. And there was an actual vote before the 2002 election that would give Bush the right, I believe, to go to war, to, to engage in war, something like that, or to prepare for war, something like that. And he actually got up there and said, you know, if, 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 if you really love this country or something to that effect, then you will vote for this because I think that if you're, that would be unpatriotic not to vote for this. 
So there were a lot of politicians, you know, who really didn't want, didn't have as much information as they needed at the time to make it. And of course, you could say uh, uh, they should never make a decision based on uh, based on politics. But you know, there was an election coming up, and there was going to be an election after that. And if they were wrong about any of that, if there was uh, weapons of mass destruction, or they voted for Bush not to go to war, and there was weapons of mass destruction, uh, they would have to live with that, and that they would probably would not get elected. So there were a lot of things that were going on. But the main focus of all of this was the fact that George Bush administration, you know, in terms of putting his agencies under pressure, you know, remember they got rid of that chief of staff, General uh, Shinseki? No, no, I can't remember if that was his name or not. Uh, it was a long name. <laughs> you know, they asked him how much he thought the war would cost. And he said, oh, 200, 300 billion at least. You know, and they got rid of him right away. They got rid of him right away, you know. So the thing was, they lied. They lied consistently, continuously, and they put it about uh, that America could be attacked. Remember they said that they had drones that could bring mustard gas to New York City and all that other type of happy horse shit. They intimidated the Senate. They intimidated the agencies. They threw out a public relations campaign that was all over the map with inconsistencies, but there wasn't, you know, it was a short lead up to the war, there wasn't, there wasn't enough pushback, there wasn't enough hard evidence about what was going on, about some of that stuff, but again, we were lied into war, you know, the media, let's just talk about the media for part of that, is the media, you know, if you ask a politician a hard question, you'll never get a chance to ask that politician a question ever again, you know, they're, they're <clears throat> In fact, you know, their publicist, you know, their marketing person or whatever, they won't talk to you. You know, so you got to play your little game where you sort of, sort of play around with this whole thing. You know, only when someone's really under the gun can you really ask those tough questions. And we didn't ask a lot of those tough questions, especially uh, to Bush, especially to Cheney, Wolfowitz, uh, Rumsfeld, uh, who's the other guy, Thief, uh, all these these. Crazy, you know, warmongers that just wanted to do war, you know. So maybe we'll have a frank talk about it. Uh, you know, it's 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 screwing up. It's screwing up Jeb right now. Uh, uh, what's his face? Rubio you know, messed up everything on it yesterday. You know, and it, but it really doesn't make any difference about these guys stumbling about the whole thing. The real thing is we were lied into war, and it wasn't just a mistake. It wasn't that mistakes were made. It wasn't that errors were made. It was a crime. The whole thing was a crime, and they should have been charged with war crimes. But, but that's not going to happen. But yes, we should have that discussion. Was it a crime? Yes, it was.